verse 14, 29 to 30, just a quick recap of what we studied last week. You will all drop dead in this wilderness because you complained against me, every one of you who is 20 years old or older and was included in the registration will die. You will not enter and occupy the land I swore to give you. The only exceptions will be Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. And so when the people of Israel complained, saying to Moses, we don't want to go to the promised land. There are giants there. We want to go back to Egypt because it's safe in Egypt. When they complained against Moses and complained against Yahuwah God, what did Yahuwah God say? He said, okay, you will drop dead in this wilderness. And so that generation of the people of Israel would not get to go into the promised land. Well, how then will God fulfill his promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Well, Yahuwah God says, everyone who is 20 years or below 20 years old, they're the ones who are going to occupy the promised land. So Yahuwah God, he set apart a new generation, right? What happened to the old generation? They were going to drop dead in the wilderness. But a new generation, a remnant of that old generation, they will be the ones to occupy the promised land. And what is God's promise to them? Numbers 14, 31 to 33, you said your children would be carried off as plunder. Well, I will bring them safely into the land and they will enjoy what you have despised. But as for you, you will drop dead in this wilderness and your children will be like shepherds wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. In this way, they will pay for your faithlessness until the last of you lies dead in the wilderness. And so apparently, Yahuwah God was pretty upset, right? Because the generation of Israelites were faithless. They did not have faith in Yahuwah our God. And so God says, you will not occupy the promised land. And he set apart a remnant, a new generation. This new generation has to be different from the generation it came from. Why? Why do they have to be different? Because the generation they came from, they were faithless. Yes, they saw the miracles of God, but they still lack faith. I wonder why. What could be the root cause of their faithlessness? What hindered them from completely having faith in Yahuwah, our God? Let's read the book of Numbers 14, 3 down to 4. We kind of get a clue. Why is Yahuwah taking us to this country, to the promised land, only to have us die in battle? Our wives and our little ones will be carried off as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt? Then they plotted among themselves, let's choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. So what was the reason why the generation of Israelites were faithless? What was the root cause of their faithlessness? What hindered them from focusing with faith on the promise of Yahuwah God? It's because they were still stuck in the past, right? You notice what they said? Let's go back to where? Egypt. Egypt. They were unable to let go of Egypt. You know, when you think about it, it's kind of like human nature. It's like when people need to change, it's kind of hard to change. We tend to be stuck with our old habits, our old patterns of doing things. Isn't that true? This is why if we really want to progress in our faith, if we really want to do what God wants us to do, we have to be willing to be untethered. We need to remove our ties from the past that is hindering us from going forward to occupy the promised land. This generation of Israelites, they could not untether themselves from Egypt and the ways of life of Egypt. Because of this, they stumbled and they fell. And so we, as we proceed towards God's promise, what does Apostle Paul instruct us to do? Before we go to Numbers 15, I just want to interject this letter from Apostle Paul, which 
we believe is very relevant and applicable to each one of us today. Philippians 3, 12 to 14. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection. But I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Yahusha first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Yahusha is calling us. This is why, like what we have mentioned to you in our past Bible studies, the journey of Israel to the promised land in some ways is very similar to our journey. Apostle Paul says we need to press forward. We need to press forward onward to what lies ahead the people of Israel back then it's what they also needed to do but they could not let go of the past this is why apostle Paul instructing us today in the Christian era preparing us for the second advent of Yahusha our king apostle Paul is telling us for us to be able to receive that heavenly prize what must we do first what does it say Forgetting the past. And when the Bible says forgetting the past, what is that in reference to? It's referring to the ideas, the beliefs, the patterns of doing things that are against the will of Abba. In other words, what we need to do is we need to untether, detach, to untether ourselves from the faithless ways of our ancestors. We need to learn from our past and look forward to what lies ahead and fulfill our calling. Because when we study biblical history, what have you noticed so far? Like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, what do you notice about those three patriarchs? What do you notice about Moses? All of them have flaws, right? They're human beings like us. Isn't that kind of refreshing to know? Because sometimes when we think about the great people of God, we think they're perfect. Moses was perfect. Abraham was perfect. Isaac was perfect. No, they all had flaws. People of Israel, they had flaws. We have flaws too. We have mistakes. We make mistakes. But the point is, we need to identify what they are, right? And once we know what they are, we need to untether ourselves from these patterns of faithlessness so that we can move forward to new patterns of faithfulness to Yahuwah, our God. Because unless we tether ourselves from the past, it's going to pull us back. It's going to pull us back. Remember, God has set apart a new generation. So we have to detach from the old ways, from the generation that we have come from. We need to learn from the faults of our previous ancestors and their generations. It's the only way for us to be able to focus ahead, okay? Can we agree on that? And so when Yahuwah God set apart a new generation, because he decreed the old generation where they came from, they're not going to enter the promised land. And so now God, in speaking to the new generation to come, what did he say to Moses? Numbers 15, 1 to 2. Then Yahuwah told Moses, give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you finally settle in the land, I am giving you. I want to pause there for a while. I kind of feel bad for the old generation. Perhaps they were eavesdropping to what Yahuwah God is saying to Moses. And then Yahuwah God is telling Moses, they're going to enter the land. The land I am giving you. And the old generation, they know they're not part of that plan anymore because of their faithlessness, right? And so Yahuwah God is set apart, this new generation, and he said to them, I am giving you this land. What is that called? It's a promise. You see, for us to be able to focus ahead, we need to focus on the promise of Yahuwah our God. Because without a promise... There's no direction in our journey. It's like when you go on a long trip, right? Maybe you have, you know, 
truck, a van, or whatever vehicle you might be driving, and you have put on the gas, you have a destination, right? Otherwise, you're just going to be driving for no reason. And so every time we drive, there's always a destination. And so in our journey, do we have a destination? Yeah. Do we have a promise from Yehovah God? Yes. Because without a promise, why even take the journey? And so we need to always have in our minds the promise of Yehovah our God. And we have many promises. Yehovah God promised the very small remnant that they're going to build a temple, a city of righteousness. And so we need to work on that. This is Yehovah's promise to each one of us. Now, what else must we do so that we can focus ahead? What else did Yehovah God say to Moses for the new generation of Israelites? Let's read the book of Numbers 15, 3 down to 5. You will offer special gifts as a pleasing aroma to Yehovah. These gifts may take the form of a burnt offering, a sacrifice to fulfill a vow, voluntary offering, or an offering at any of your annual festivals. And they may be taken from your herds of cattle or your flocks of sheep and goats. When you present these offerings, you must also give Yahuwah a grain offering of two quarts of choice flour mixed with one quart of olive oil. For each lamb offered as a burnt offering or a special sacrifice, you must also present one quart of wine as a liquid offering. And so besides focusing on the promise of Yahuwah, for us to be able to fulfill Yahuwah's will, that we can occupy the land and do what he wants us to do, what do we need to also focus on as well? We need to focus on pleasing Yahuwah our God, right? Because... Whether we like it or not, what does human nature tell us to do? Human nature, it seems like we go to God and ask God what God can do for us, right? God, can you do this for me? Remember the old Israelites, the old generation? What do they demand God? We want meat to eat, right? When they did not have water, they complained to God. We want water to drink. And so they wanted God even to do the hunting for them. And so... That's human nature. We go to God and ask God, give me this. We go to God and ask God, do this for me. In other words, what we want from God is for God to please us. However, we need to turn that around. We need to untether ourselves from that pattern. Instead of focusing on God pleasing us, what should we focus on, brethren? Focus on pleasing God. How do we do that? Well, to focus on pleasing God, we have to do what God wants us to do. Yahuwah God says, be holy because I am holy. And this is why Yahuwah God presented different, of, different sacrifices for the purpose of purifying us so that we can be holy as God is holy. We studied in Numbers chapter 1 all the way to chapter 7 about the different offerings, right? The burnt offering, the... Uh, Voluntary offerings, the grain offering, the sin offering, the liquid offering. We studied all that in Numbers chapter 1, verse 7. What does this show us about God? He's very serious about sin. And so if we want to please Yahuwah our God, we need to make sure that we are able to please Him by carefully following His instructions. And so to please Yahuwah God, what do we need to keep in mind? Numbers 15, 22 to 23. But suppose you unintentionally fail to carry out all these commands that Yahuwah has given you through Moses. And suppose your descendants in the future fail to do everything Yahuwah has commanded through Moses. Let's pause here for a while. In Numbers chapter 1 to 7, we talked about the different offerings. Right? Different sacrifices for the forgiveness of sins. In Numbers 1 to 7, the sins referred to there was the sin of commission. Because there are two kinds of sins. The sin of commission. What's the other one? There's the sin of commission. And there's the sin of? Omission. Yes. The sin of? Omission. What is the sin of commission? It's the sin that people commit. When they do something that God forbids, right? 
So numbers one to seven basically cover the sin of commission. If you commit, for example, you lied or you did something against your neighbor. When you committed a sin, when God says, do not do this, and you did it, that's a sin, right? And you have to give a sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. In Numbers chapter 15, sacrifices were also given out uh, or explained through Moses, this time to cover the sins of omission. Now, what is the sin of omission? It's when God tells you to do something, but you don't do it. Why? Is God focusing now on the sin of omission? Because the people of Israel were not able to enter the promised land because of the sin of omission. What did God say? Occupy. What did they do? They went back. <laughs> they did not occupy. And so God is focusing now. Okay, you need to do what I tell you to do. You see, if we focus on pleasing Yahuwah God, what we need to do is to stay away from, we must not do, what Yahuwah forbids, and we must do what Yahuwah commands us to do. And so when Yahuwah says, okay, it's time to occupy the promised land, you have to do that. It's a good thing. This generation, this new generation of the people of Israel, they learned. And so when the time came, when they were going to occupy the land, were they able to do it? Yes, because they untethered themselves from the past mistakes. They untethered themselves from the old way of thinking, we need to do the same thing. Brethren, we came from, you know, influences of the past. The institution we came from taught us certain things that we are finding out today is against the will of Yahuwah. We need to untether ourselves from these past influences so that we can move forward and please Yahuwah by doing what he wants us to do. Remember, it's a sin not to do what God wants you to do. Do. This is why in our previous Bible study, we left off with a passage from the book of James. If you know something to do and you don't do it, what is that called? Sin. Sin. And so if God wants you to do something, we better do it. And so number two, focus to focus ahead and receive the promise of God. Number one, we need to focus on the promise. Number two, focus on pleasing Yahuwah, God, by not doing what he doesn't want us to do and by doing what he wants us to do. To do okay, what's number three? How else can we focus ahead? Let's read Numbers 15 27 29. If one individual commits an unintentional sin, the guilty person must bring a one year old female goat for a sin offering. The priest will sacrifice it to purify the guilty person before Yahuwah, and that person will be forgiven. These same instructions apply both to native-born Israelites and to the foreigners living among you. So how else can we focus ahead? Bible says when we commit an unintentional sin, we need to purify ourselves. As human beings, do we commit sins? Yeah. Raise your hand if you haven't committed a sin today. Anyone here did not commit a sin today? I'm looking across the room. Nobody's raising their hands. I think all of us are guilty of sin, right? How many sins did you do last week? No? I'm going to ask my wife that question. How many sins did you commit last week? She doesn't want to tell me. She's just shaking her head. All of us are guilty of sin, right? However, we have an individual responsibility to make sure that when we are guilty of sin, intentional or unintentional, that we go to Yahuwah, our God, and ask for forgiveness. During the days of Israel, how was that done? They had to give a sacrifice to the priest, right? During our time, because of Yahusha's sacrifice, we just go to Yahusha and ask for forgiveness, right? And so we need to be always repentant of our sins. Therefore, that's one of the things we need to kind of focus on as well. Focus on personal cleansing, by daily looking and examining at our life and repenting from our sins. What else must we do? Numbers 15 verse 24. If the mistake was made unintentionally, again, this is in reference to unintentional sin, and the community was unaware of it, the whole community must present a young bull for a burnt offering 
as a pleasing aroma to Yahuwah. It must be offered along with its prescribed grain offering and liquid offering and with one male goat for a sin offering. So we have a different kind of uh, sin here. Still unintentional. But this time, instructions were given for a sin that is committed by the whole community, not just an individual person. Isn't that interesting? That Yahuwah can hold accountable a whole community of Israelites. In this case, he was referring to the whole body of Israel. And so God can hold an individual accountable, right, for his or her own sin. But also God can hold the whole community accountable for sin. Perhaps they're not even aware of that sin yet. And so once they become aware of their unintentional sin, what must they do? They have to go through the process of purification, burnt offering, grain offering, liquid offering, and sin offering. It is the prescribed way so that the whole community can be forgiven by Yahuwah our God. And so who will lead this purification process? 25, 26. With it, the priests will purify the whole community of Israel, making them right with Yahuwah. And they will be forgiven. For it was an unintentional sin. And they have corrected it with their offerings to Yahuwah, with special gift and the sin, and, and the sin offering. The whole community of Israel will be forgiven. Indeed, the foreigners living among you, for all the people were in, uh, were involved in the sin. And so when the whole community of Israel is guilty of sin, who does, whom does God hold accountable? Bible says all the people were involved in the sin. And because this is the case, what must the people of Israel as a community, as a whole, do? They have to rectify the problem. Person cannot say, well, I'm not responsible for that sin. The individual belonging to that community has a responsibility to make known that sin so that corrections can be made and sins can be forgiven. This is why, brethren, we must focus not only on personal cleansing, but also on communal cleansing. And so what does God expect? What does God expect from individual members of a community that belong to him? Let's read the book of Ezekiel. 22, 30 to 31, I looked for someone who might rebuild the wall of righteousness that guards the land. I searched for someone to stand in the gap, in the wall, so I wouldn't have to destroy the land. But I found no one. So now I will pour out my fury on them, consuming them with the fire of my anger. I will heap on their heads the full penalty for all their sins. I, the sovereign Yahuwah, have spoken. And so what we read there is Yahuwah's declaration concerning his people in the past. What did Yahuwah notice? His people, his whole community, the whole community of the people of Israel. They committed sin against Yahuwah God, right? But no one cared to do anything about it at all. And so what was God looking for? He was looking for one person to do something about it. To voice out the sin of the people of Israel. But none of them, not one, did Yahuwah find. Right? He was looking for one. But there was no one who stood on the side of Righteousness, And so what did Yahuwah God do? He said, I will pour out my fury on them, consuming them with the fire of my anger. And so brothers and sisters, we need to understand. Whoops. Where are we? Okay, all right, so every time uh, Yahuwah God, he's always looking for someone to do the right thing. 
When the people as a whole begin to drift away from Yahuwah God, he's looking for someone to do something to correct what is happening so that the whole people of God will not be consumed by the fire of Yahuwah's anger. And so when this happened to Israel, what, what did God do? The Bible says that God poured out his fury on them. And so what does God expect from us as individuals? Because right now, we belong to a community, right? We belong to the assembly of Yahusha. So what do we have as our responsibility so that we will not be punished by Yahuwah God? Let's go to the book of Jeremiah 5, 26 to 31. Evil doers live among my people. They lie in wait like those who lay nets to catch birds, but they have set their traps to catch people. Just as a hunter fills a cage with birds, they have filled their houses with loot. That is why they are powerful and rich why they are fat and well fed. There is no limit to their evil deeds. They do not give orphans the rights or show justice to the oppressed. But I, Yahuwah, will punish, will punish them for these things. I will take revenge on this nation. A terrible and shocking thing has happened in the land. Prophets speak nothing but lies. Priests rule as the prophets command. And my people offer no objections. But what will they do? When it all comes to an end, so that we can keep focusing on what is ahead and fulfill and receive the promises of our Yahuwah God. What is our responsibility to the whole community of believers? We have the responsibility to object whenever the will of Yahuwah is being violated. Why must we do this? Because there is always the danger. Of the leaders of God's people, like the prophets, like the priests. Because if you look at the passage, the Bible says prophets speak nothing but lies. What are prophets supposed to do? They're supposed to tell the truth, right? Sometimes they're human beings. They begin to tell lies. What else? Priests rule as the prophets command. And so they agreed with the prophets. They Follow the lies of the prophets. And what is worse, the Bible says, my people offer no objections. What were the things that were happening that caused Yahuwah God to be angry with his people Israel? The Bible says there are some who are becoming powerful and rich, well-fed and fat. In other words, they're taking advantage of the other sheep. They're taking advantage of those who are weak instead of taking care of them. And so what happens to several of these leaders? They become more and more powerful. And Yahuwah God says, no one is objecting. And so because no one objected, what happened to the people of Israel? It all came to an end. We must not let that happen with us today. This is why... Brothers and sisters who are listening today, if you belong to our community, let us make sure this will be fulfilled. Do not be afraid to confront your leaders. If your leaders are doing something against the will of Yahuwah, you have to tell us. Because maybe we don't know. Maybe it's an unintentional sin. We're not aware. We need to correct each other. Just because I'm preaching here and you're listening doesn't mean you cannot correct me. You can correct me. You should. We need to correct each other, right? Because if not, we're going to follow that old pattern that led to Israel being punished by Yahuwah, our God. Now, if the people of Israel, their sins have been made known, but they refuse to renew their life, what kind of sin is that? The book of Numbers 15, 30 to 31. But those who brazenly violate Yahuwah's will, whether native-born Israelites or foreigners have blasphemed Yahuwah and they must be cut off from the community since they have treated Yahuwah's word with contempt and deliberately disobeyed his command. They must be completely cut off and suffer the punishment for their guilt. And so if one, there's a, there are unintentional sins, but there are sins that brazenly violate Yahuwah's will. It's a fancy word, brazen. What does that mean? Brazenly violate. Yeah, do it on purpose, right? Maybe we'll ask a college student here. We'll ask a, Mr. Jenna. 
What does brazenly mean? Yeah. Like it's, an, it's like not only committing sin, but knowingly committing sin. And you do it with contempt. That's why in verse 31, it says there, since they have treated Yahuwah's word with contempt. Because there are people who sin for the purpose of angering God, for blaspheming him, right? And so when you are being corrected, because sometimes perhaps the people of Israel, the people of God, maybe they're not aware of the sin of idolatry. Maybe they did not realize that they were committing the sin of idolatry. Then someone makes it known to them. And, and what they do is they all the more commit the sin of idolatry. So they begin to brazenly violate Yahuwah's will. What does God decree against those who brazenly violate his will? The Bible says they're cut off from the community. We don't want that to happen. Now, who's an example? How was this illustrated? This brazen violation of Yahuwah's will when they treated Yahuwah's commands with contempt. Numbers 15, 32, 34. One day, while the people of Israel were in the wilderness, they discovered a man gathering wood on the Sabbath day. The people who found him doing this uh, took him before Moses, Aaron, and the rest of the community. They held him in custody because they did not know what to do with him. And so what we have here is we have someone who did not want to follow the norm. This is why the people, they did not know what to do with this man. What did this man do? He was gathering wood on Sabbath day. What was the command of Yahuwah God that everyone in that community knew? They were not, no one is allowed to do that on a Sabbath day. But this person, maybe he wants to be a trendsetter, right? Maybe he wants to do a new thing. And so what does he do? He brazenly violates the command of Yahuwah. So even if everyone is keeping the law of Yahuwah, he decides to treat Yahuwah's command with contempt. And so he took some wood and he broke the command of Yahuwah God concerning the Sabbath day. And so what did Yahuwah God decide to do with this brazen violation of his command? Let's read 15, 35 to 36. And Yahuwah said to Moses, the man must be put to death. The whole community must stone him outside the camp. So the whole community took the man outside the camp and stoned him to death. Just as Yahuwah had commanded Moses. And so what did God decide to do with the man who, with contempt, brazenly violated the command of Yahuwah concerning the Sabbath day? The decree of God is for him to be put to death. There's something we need to understand there, brethren. You see, for us to have a good relationship with Yahuwah God, we must remember God is God and man is man. Did you get that? Sometimes we tend to forget who he is. He's the creator of all things, right? We are but the creation. We're created by Yahuwah God. And so we need to show God reverence. We need to show utmost respect for him. And so let's not tempt and test Yahuwah our God. If God tells us to do something, we should do it. If Yahuwah God tells us not to do something, we must not do that. We need to show God reverence. And so to focus ahead, we need to focus on the promise of Yahuwah God. We need to focus on pleasing Yahuwah God. We need to focus on our personal cleansing. We need to focus on communal cleansing. We need to focus on reverence for Yahuwah God. What else? One final thing in Numbers 15. And then we'll wrap it up. Numbers 15, 37 to 38. Then Yahuwah said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. Throughout the generations to come, you must make tassels for the hems of your clothing and attach them with a blue cord. What does Yahuwah God also instructed Moses to do? That the people of Israel should follow. <laughs> Yahuwah God tells them that they should make tassels, right? Attach them with, with a blue cord. You know what that's called? It's called a chit chit. It's spelled T Z I T, T Z I T. How do you pronounce that? Chit chit. Chit chit. 
it's it's like a, it's like an, an accessory that you put on your clothing, right? And so it was instructed it should be made of blue, a blue cord. And the the color blue for some reason reminds us about holiness because blue in the Bible, the, for example, blue cloth covers the Ark of the Covenant. You know when they transport the Ark of the Covenant when they move from place to place, camp to camp, right? Blue cloth cover the Ark of the Covenant. Blue curtains adorn the tabernacle. And blue was in the garments of the high priest. So the, the color blue seems to signify holiness. And so Yahuwah says we ought to attach blue, uh, blue tassels in our clothing. And what was its purpose? Why were they instructed to, to wear tassels color blue? Well, in Numbers 15, 39 to 41, when you see the tassels, you will remember and obey all the commands of Yahuwah instead of following your own desires and defiling yourselves, as you are prone to do. Yahuwah God knows human nature. After all, he was the one who created us, right? So he knows our weaknesses. He knows what we're prone to do. And so God says, wear these tassels. Verse 40. The tassels will help you remember that you must obey all my commands and be holy to your God. I am Yahuwah, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that I might be your God. I am Yahuwah, your God. So what's the purpose of wearing these tassels? It is to remind us about the commands of Yahuwah God. Why do we need to be reminded? Because as human beings, we tend to forget. Maybe we encounter a situation where we are tempted to disobey the, the, the will of God. And so all of a sudden we see this, my, our tassels, right? And it reminds us of the commands of Yahuwah God. This is why we need to remind ourselves of God's commands. It's good to read our Bibles daily. It's good to remember verses. Just this week, there was a sister who messaged me and she found this Bible app. And every day she would be given a Bible verse of the day. And it would just give her inspiration. That's nice. You know, we can, we can have a high-tech tassel, right? But the purpose of the blue tassel is really to remind us of the words and commandments of God. Because the commandments of God is like food. It's food for our soul. It's what inspires and guides us on a daily basis. How important is it that we always remember the words of God? Proverbs 4, 10 to 13, my child, listen to me and do as I say, and you will have a long, good life. I will teach you wisdom's ways and lead you in straight paths. When you walk, you won't be held back. When you run, you won't stumble. Take hold of my instructions. Don't let them go. Guard them, for they are the key to life. And so just like the tassels are attached to your body and your clothing, Yahuwah God is telling us to hold on. Hold on to those tassels. Hold on to the words of God. Do not let go of the words of God. Why? Because the word of God will guide us to have a long and good life. It will make our path straight so that we can complete our journey and occupy the promised land. What else is the promise of Yahuwah God? If we will hold on to the instructions, to the tassel, the words of our God, the book of Proverbs 4, 20 and 22, my child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart, for they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. And so let us not lose sight of Yahuwah's words. Let us study the words of God. This is why it's important that we go through the whole process of digging deep and looking for the wisdom of Yahuwah throughout the entire Bible. This is why we have the Bible History Project from Genesis hopefully all the way to, to Revelation, we will mine the book, the Bible, for God's wisdom so that we can hold on to them and keep them and live by them. Because when we do that, it will bring life to us and it will heal our whole body. And so, brothers and sisters, because we are on a journey, 
we must focus ahead. To do that, number one, focus on the promise of Yahuwah God. God has a promise for us. Focus on pleasing Yahuwah God. Instead of trying to focus on pleasing ourselves, let's focus on pleasing Yahuwah. Number three, focus on personal cleansing. Let us be repentant of our sins. Number four, focus on communal cleansing. Let us do our best to make sure that the whole community of God's people remains, remains connected to Yahuwah God. Number five, focus on reverence for Yahuwah our God. Let us not do anything to displease him. And number six, focus on the word of Yahuwah our God. If we will follow these things, we will be guided in our journey. People of Israel, they were led in their journey. First, it was by Moses, right? Moses passed away. Who took over? Joshua, right? After Joshua were the judges and then the kingdom of Israel. But during our time today, we are also on a journey, right? Who is following? Who is leading us in our journey today? It's not Moses. It's not Joshua. Who is leading us now? Yahusha, our king. And so what does he want us to do? We're going to read just one more passage before we pray. But this applies to all of us, to all of us, because we are followers of Yahusha, right? And this is what he wants us to do. In the book of Luke 9, 59, 62, he said to another person, come, follow me. The man agreed, but he said, Lord, first let me return home and bury my father. But Yahusha told him, let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. Your duty is to go and preach about the kingdom of God. Another said, yes, Lord, I will follow you, but first let me say goodbye to my family. But Yahuwah told him, anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. We're following our leader. Yahusha, our king. We're on a journey, and Yahusha says, come, follow me. However, as we follow Yahusha, let us make sure that we don't end up like the two examples given here. Who said to Yahusha, we will follow you. But you notice, there was a but, right? But, I have to do this first. Lord, I will follow you, but I have to do this first. Does that remind you of something? Remember when Caleb and Joshua gave the report to the Israelites about the promised land? What did they say? What did the, the, the other 10, I should say, the other 10 who gave a report? They said, it's a nice piece of land flowing with milk and honey. We have samples of the grapes. What did they say? What did they add after that? But... <laughs> But it's so easy to attach that word but as we follow Yahusha. Yahusha is telling us, follow me. Maybe some of us can think of an excuse. Maybe we will postpone what Yahuwah wants us to do and say to Yahuwah, but... You can fill in the blanks, right? But what does Yahusha say to those who postpone? Because the two individuals here, they did not say to Yahusha, I will not obey and follow you. They said, we will follow you, but let me do this first, right? You know what Yahusha said? And what Yahusha will say to those who have the but to postpone what Yahusha wants us to do? Yahusha said, anyone, anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Brethren, our hands, are they in the plow? Yes. What must we never do? Do not look back. Do not look back. Untether ourselves from the faithless acts of our ancestors from the past. Learn, learn from the mistakes of Abraham, 
Isaac, and Jacob. Learn from the mistakes of Moses. Learn from the mistakes of Israel. Learn from the first century church of Christ. Learn from the mistakes of the institution that we came from. Do not go back. Do not go back. Instead, we need to look forward and follow our king, the one leader appointed by Yahuwah to lead us to the promised land, Yahushua, the anointed one. If we will do this, brethren, we will be taken to the holy city that has been promised to each and every one of us. Let us stand and we shall pray together. Everlasting Abba, yes. thank you so much for the guidance of your holy words. Yes. Indeed, the history of your people, yes. our ancestors, yes. have much to teach us yes. about our path today. Amen. We know there are many distractions, yes. many excuses. Yes. So teach us to focus on your words. Yes. To focus on pleasing you yes, and Father. to cleanse ourselves from sin that Amen. defiles. Father, thank you so much for not giving up on us. Yes, for Father. despite your guidance, despite yes, your Father. promises, we confess to you as human beings. Yes. We falter and stumble. Forgive us. Forgive us, almighty Yahuwah. Yes. And give us a focused heart. Yes. A focused mind that we will seek everything that pleases you. Amen. Yahusha, our King, we will say amen yes. to everything that you instruct us to do. Yes. We have placed our hands upon the plow yes. and we heed your precious voice yes. because you died for us. Yes. We know that at this very moment, by means of your shed blood, yes. you will lead us. To the true promised land. Amen. Help us to be obedient to your voice. Yes, but during times when we feel weak. May you strengthen us. Yes, Give us hope please. Especially when. The circumstances of life. Yes. Lead us to persecution. Yes. When people insult us. Because of your name. Yes. Help us to be strong. Yes. To realize you are our true king. And that we will follow you forever. Amen. Father thank you so much. For your blessings upon our life. Yes. We know very soon you will send your son. Yes. And we will see you at last. Amen. Thank you for everything you have given us. Yes. Please always protect and also provide for the needs of your people. Amen. We ask and beg everything in the name of our Lord and Savior. Yahusha the Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, brothers and sisters. Uh, this concludes our Bible study for today. Uh, please join us for our worship services this coming Saturday, uh, which is Filipino, and also uh, Sunday for the English worship services. That is all, and may Yahuwah God bless all of us.